Uh, no. There's new ones up here. Just give me a sec. Um, actually, hang on. Just chuck that one on the uh, coffee machine, bro. Miguel.
the job. Or uh, So welcome in for this, the first match of day two, week four of the Unscotchable Premier League. And this first match is in the red, Michael Sheltonegar, and in the grey, we'll call it, that is Upper Fariolika, he's the 15 year old. Just got the entry ranking on the PSA, it's around about 596. So it should be an entertaining contest between these two. Yesterday it was Shelton Agar winning in five over Jack Condor. And for Upper Faria Lofa, it was his first time in the competition and he was beaten in straight games, but showed plenty of potential when he took on Glenn Templeton. And helping me with comments today, uh, Hassan. Uh, could be quite an interesting contest with the different style of Faria Lofa. He's got a lot of good touch, a little bit different to his brother. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, um, I mean, it's obviously good to be back commentating. Obviously, it's fun. It's very fun to talk about squash. Um, considering the match, it's very interesting because when Michael's in his element, everything will go his way and he plays very good shots when he needs to and he can pull them out of nowhere. But the question is, will Upper give him the opportunity to do that or will Upper stick to a strong game plan where he's going to try to keep it tight and keep, keep, keep it away from those hot spots that Michael has? It'll be quite interesting to see how this goes. Yeah, now you've seen this rally up. He's trying to put the pressure on. But Michael's just returning very well. Obviously, Michael, in terms of... <laughs> shot. In terms of the New Zealand rankings, is slightly higher than upper, but I would say these two are pretty close in terms of skill. Yeah. Obviously, I let there because he's turned around. The, the thing that you're seeing with uh, upper Fadi Alofa, being a 15 year old, he can. So just the players there, not quite familiar. I mean, sometimes you do get a little bit mixed up sometimes with a yeah. let yeah. against a point or a stroke. It's, it's easy very, very good that he stopped the rally early because I've seen it once or twice. They, if they don't hear the ref and the rally goes on and they have a really good rally and then the ref has to say, oh, sorry guys, it's a, <laughs> you're going to have to play a let on that. <laughs> you know, It's very good to see that quick response in that situation. The difference between Upper Fadi Lofa at 15 and his brother Leo, 17. What you see with Upper is possibly longer rallies. He doesn't mind using touch more so than shot making. And he doesn't mind staying on the rallies a little bit longer than his older brother. Yeah, he would definitely, in my eyes, be a better 
he'd be a guy who'd run on the court a lot more willingly than Leo. Whereas obviously Leo, as we know, has a very wide range of shots that he can play and the rallies tend to be shorter, whereas upper, almost in a way I'd describe him as a grinder. Right. He'd, he'd just run into the ground almost during the rally to get the point. So the different styles in that sense that Leo will be a shot maker? Yep. Whereas Upper will take his time in the shots? Definitely, yep. So let us know where you are around the world. We know we have one Australian watching, one of our regular fans. Thank hey, you very much for coming in. Off. There he is. Yeah, he's, he's here. Good to have you. You're a legend here, mate. You've seen a lot of squash over these last four weeks, but we've appreciated your comments and appreciated having you watching all the squash as well. So thank you very much for tuning in from Australia. And uh, anybody else from around the world, feel free to let us know where you are and to make any comments on the play as well. What you see also from uh, Shelton Agar is he can look down and out completely, yet somehow just chips away yeah. and it comes through and uh, wins, wins games like yesterday. Yeah, He's I'd got never, game ball here at the moment. Yeah. Like I'd never count him out in any situation. There you go, taking out the first game as well. It's just a little bit closer on the scoreboard than yesterday for Fatih Lopez. He was beaten comprehensively on the scoreboard, but not on every rally. He no, stayed no, it and no. hit some good winners, showed a lot of ability against Glenn Templeton. Yep. But th this is the thing for a 15-year-old. Give it a go. Play on a glass court. Yeah, definitely. It's <laughs> a, just to have the opportunity for these guys at the level of squash to be able to play on the, the glass court is a huge, huge opportunity for them. And the fact that if they're aspiring pros and they want to go on, you know, to further the heights obviously they won't get to experience a glass court either in any other place other than here at this stage so it's a really good build up for them it is indeed so that is the first game going to Shelton Agar coming back after this short break for the players with the second game it is Upper Fadilo for the 15 year old against the veteran of the tournament at 21 uh, Michael Shelton Agar back with the second game in just a moment Back now for the second game with Shelton Agar taking the first against Upper Fadialofa. But uh, some of that support coming through online. Keep it coming for, uh, for Upper Fadialofa. Some of uh, the friends coming through. Good to have you guys. Ultra let's go. <laughs> yeah. That's a great name. And obviously it, it's a very... Oh, oh, wow. That's a very high shot. Uh, I don't know where that went, but it went in the wrong direction. I must not like the ref or something. That was uh, very close. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I've seen a shot quite like that before. Uh, slight delay, folks, after the ball went completely the wrong direction. Almost landed down, in the coffee machine. Yeah, you almost hit Heather Finlay, the official. Um, yeah, I haven't really seen a shot like that before. No. <laughs> that was a little bit of a out of the, out of the usual excitement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so now in, the, in this game now, the important thing is to kind of start to control the rally now. You see as Michael has a two-point lead at this point. Ooh. 
And what uh, Apa Fadi Alofa can do is he, he's very good at subtle drop shots. Yeah, his front game's pretty strong. But as you can see, Michael's kind of picking up anything that he gives him and he's just moving him to the back. There's not much, there's actually not much of the rally at the front. You see, there's maybe one drop shot and then goes straight to the back. So he's not actually getting a chance to play his drop shots. Might see one now. Ah, it's a nice shot That's down the shot line. Though. Yeah. The thing is, the way he hit that was with his racket out in front. It wasn't almost a stroke. It was a, almost a cricket shot. Yeah. For it was a a flick of the wrist. I, I, would, I would say it probably was a little bit of a almost a tactic to throw Michael off, thinking he's going to go into the front, whereas the pops up towards the left. What we're seeing from Upper Fadi Lofer is actually a, quite a good squash brain for such a young guy. Yeah, definitely. I, honestly, some of the guys in this, um, in this squash or Premier League, the really young guys, they're actually ridiculously smart in terms of squash IQ, mm. and you can see that on court especially. It's very, very good to watch. So what we're seeing is a lot of potential. It just needs to be harnessed. <laughs> yeah. And at a place like this, maybe, like earlier, we are talking about playing on the glass court. It's really good for these young ones who have really good squash minds to be able to play on a court like this and try to figure out what it's like. Indeed. And uh, good to have a player such as Shelton Aga. Yeah, definitely. But Michael... Um, I don't know him too much personally, but I do know that he was part of the Auckland Junior squads, and obviously I think he might have been in contention for the New Zealand Junior squads when he was back in the mm -hmm. under-19 age range. So he's no, um, he's no, he's no, he's no, he's not new to the junior environment and the tough standards and competition that it has. Yeah, just the different style as well. It's not like you're playing against another junior style, which yep. sometimes is a little similar for players. He's uh, a little bit different in the way he plays, which is a good thing. Yeah. So the score's locked up at 7-0. It'll be interesting to see which player come out on top of this game. It's a very important game for both of them. I'd say probably a bit more for Upper, especially considering since Michael's got the first one. So this is a pivotal turning point. As you can see, Upper got that point there. Very good for Upper. And good to have Cena Roberts, who's been a regular over the last few weeks with us as well. Good support there, Cena. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in and watching, making a comment as well. In the second game, it is Upper Fadi Loka keeping it tight. And this is good, this is what he's got to learn, is keep it tight, don't go for anything too flashy. Yeah. If it was his brother, I'd be, I'd be, I wouldn't be expecting that. That's a, oh, oh. <laughs> the tweener. The smart shot down the middle, right there, Michael with the, between the legs. Okay, so 9-8 now. This is an interesting one for Upper. Two points away from a game. Is he going to go for a shot to oh, one point away from a game? So if he can keep it consistent, he can take this game. Yeah, I think he's going to set this rally up quite nicely, and then as soon as he has the opportunity to go for a drop, he'll go for something that has a point like you see there. He just got, there we go, there's the setup, but he's still there. Michael still in there. Good recovery. Oh, oh he's still there. Uh, oh, nice shot. Oh, that's a nice return for Apa Fadi Lofa. Coming back with the second game after dropping the first to Michael Shelton Agar. Uh, kept his head and was very cool there. And he's got his big bro, Leo, coming out in a very laid back kind of style to uh, give him a pep talk yeah, going into the third as well. Yeah, it always helps to have family talking to you because you're more... Maybe you're not, though. There's only two years between them. There could be a little bit of... Uh... <laughs> family tension. Yeah, exactly. Now, nah, from personal experience, I'd find that family would drive me up and I'd probably listen to them slightly more than I'd listen to, say, a, a friend. <laughs> anyway, it's good to see the scores locked up. Hopefully you went for a good matchup. Indeed, uh, coming back for the third in just a moment between Michael Schoutenegger and Apa Farilla.
Let's go back into the third game. <laughs> oh. oh, what a shot. That's perfect timing. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> I think of a funny low for it's just like, oh my goodness, what happened there? We've had a tweener between the legs, we've had around the back, and we've had everything from Michael Shelton Agar in this contest so far. It was Shelton Agar. Oh, we got a running rally. Oh, oh nice play. Yeah. Sheldon Agar won the first game. It was 11-7 and Apa Farialova, the 15-year-old, came back to win the second 11-8. But Sheldon Agar's got a decent lead in the third. Yeah, he jumped straight up, six points in, and now Apa's got his first point of return off an error by Michael at the front. So, very... Hard position for Upper. let's see, hopefully he can come back. Oh. Oh. Well, what we've seen so far in this third game is the experience of Shelton Agar coming through. Speeding it up, slowing it down. Yeah, his variation of pace has been very good. You'll see he won't, he won't be slamming as hard to the back. Oh, like in that shot and it just dies in the back. Yeah, up to an 8-1 lead now. Whereas he'll up the pace and he wants to put the pressure on, but in a situation like that he can just... I wouldn't say it softly, but he would be able to have a lower pace and it would still bounce off to the back quite nicely. That's the experience of someone 21 years old who plays a lot of club squad. Yeah, definitely. Rather than a player such as Arpa, who's at the higher point of his juniors, of the age group. Yeah, and very, very competitive tournaments Arpa would actually play and compared to Michael. Due to his young age groups, I could be playing junior nationals and junior open. Obviously, in the current situation, I think New Zealand junior open's actually been cancelled. But something to look forward to for Upper this year would be secondary school nationals, obviously, because he plays for Auckland Grammar and they would be one of the top seeds going into the tournament. So there's at least something on a national level for Upper to look forward to uh, this year in terms of important tournaments. For well, the other thing is that a lot of juniors do play quite similar once they get to a certain standard, whereas yeah, Michael yeah. doesn't. His yeah, style yeah. is different. It's, it's a bit more unique. So that is the third 11-3 quickfire fashion there. And 11-3 to Michael Shelton Agar. He takes that game and is now up by two games to one against the 15-year-old Upper Farilofa. Again, we have Leo coming over, taking his time. He'll be there just in time before they're asked back on the court, won't he? <laughs> That's just his style. Uh, come through in the fourth, folks, and let us know who you're supporting. And, of course, we do have three other big matches today. Glenn Templeton against Jack Condor is up next. 
We then have Joel Ascott against Leo Fatialofa and Temwa Chalisi up against Elijah Thomas. So plenty of good squash. And don't forget tomorrow, it will be the final day of the complete competition, the unsquashable Premier League. So make sure you tell your friends to tune in for that from 3 p.m. New Zealand time. Last game, very quick game. As you can see now, Apple would be responding quite well because that last game was. Well, it was super quick. quick. Well, let's see if we've got any supporters out there for Upper 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 Upper. And we've got a couple. Let's see if we've got any more. Henderson Squash Club should be coming through. Or they're all asleep. Oh, oh, nice play. Yeah, I know it was a big night in Henderson Squash Club last night, the club night. We'd like to see some of those uh, club members from Henderson coming through and giving a bit of support to their own club member, Upper Fadi Lofa. Yeah, Upper's always been pretty uh, involved on the of the progress of Henderson, and I mean, it's shown, like, uh, if I remember last year, they were voted the most successful squash club in Auckland and yes. possibly no nah, it wasn't New Zealand but it was in Auckland definitely. I was in Auckland I remember yeah. presenting the award yeah yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah and um, he's obviously contributed a lot to that he's been yeah. very active and very vocal in improving the membership and incorporating various programs into their day to day squash routine and I mean One, one thing I do like about the Henderson Squash Club is that Upper Fadi Lofa Senior, he phones yeah, every new, he, he yeah. phones, they phone as the president every new member. Yeah, that's very, it's actually, it's almost like bringing in people as part of the family, you yeah. know, like it gives you that very, it Great gives idea. you that feeling, yeah. Very big response from Upper as expected. <laughs> well, actually, not as expected. We expected a winning response, but this is a I shot down the very back dominating inside. response by Upper. It's very good to see. It's going to be interesting to see how Michael's going to respond to it. You can see that fr 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 wow. scream of frustration from Michael. Quite amazing, racing out of almost reversal of fortune and reversal of scores <laughs> yeah. from the last game. Yeah. Sure. And now we're going to see Upper using his front game a bit better. We could be in for a five game contest here, albeit that it's been pretty quick so far. Not so many long rallies in the entire match. Now we're getting a bit more length play going on there. That's a good shot, one back. Probably the longest rally of the game so far. <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> oh, I suppose. No, I think no, that was a double. double. Yeah. 
appreciate the honesty, Barpa. Michael never stops when he's down. And as we can see with the past two, three rallies, he's still been pushing and fighting, <laughs> exactly. even though he's been down by that much. Ah, he sets himself up. Oh. oh, you can see that oh. cheeky setup. <laughs> saw that cheeky setup. He turned so he could receive the serve on the forehand, but um, Upper almost reacted to that. <laughs> and so he got really well on the wall. As a 15 year old, you look at that and you go, how the heck did that happen? Uh, it did. See, Michael's still fighting for it after being down. He's still down by quite a bit, but you know he's not. He's not a player who would willingly. Oh, unfortunate. But he's not a player who would willingly drop that last point right. unless it was some sort of important situation. But now it's quite interesting. So we are going five, eleven, four. What's that one? And uh, that is Apa Farilo for coming back and. You have to think about the mentality of Michael Sheldon-Agar here. He could just say, okay, well, I've lost that, but I think I'm smart enough to come back in this fifth. We'll let the youngster get confident. But See who backs back. himself, eh? Yeah. Well, it's only taken 26 minutes as well. So uh, 26 minutes for four games, that's not too bad. Yeah. That's it's not going to be a huge overtime like we had a couple of 50-minute matches. Yes. I think you, you yeah, actually read one of them, I read one of them yesterday. Oh. Very controversial match in terms of the on-play <laughs> attitude. But, you know, today it's quite nice because they come up to me, they're like, oh, yeah, all your calls are right. I'm very happy. And I was like, oh, wow, that's very nice. <laughs> Was that from the winner or the loser? From the loser, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. well, that's all right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, back with the fifth game very shortly of this uh, match one, day two of week four. Of the unsquishable, unsquashable, <laughs> we'll get there in a minute. <laughs> unsquashable Premier League. We're into game five now, and uh, it's been a real topsy-turvy contest. And players, if I did a quick mess check, they're basically even on points all the way through to the fifth game. Maybe one point different, uh, I think it is, Michael, probably one or two points ahead if you yeah. added up the entire yeah, match so far. Yeah. Obviously, you can see the third and fourth game are just basically topsy-turvy. You had Michael steamrolling up in the third game and then in the fourth game up with the steamroll over Michael as reflected in the score lines as well obviously 11-3 and 11-4 so it'll be interesting to see how this fifth game develops Ooh. Oh, that's loose It's Michael with the early lead to love was close to the front wall yeah. and Michael was able to play it right into the corner, no chance. Yeah. Oh, it's a shot, oh, but up, Michael's got that. That's good. Oh. <laughs> oh. Getting a few frame shots here. It's very scrappy on this rally. Still continuing. Uh, 
And there's the forehand winner again by Michael. Now he's four love up in the fifth game. We'll be, we'll be really... So Ipo just needs to slow it down, change it back to his pace, because at the moment it is Michael Shelton Agar who's dictating this particular game. Yeah. Uh, interesting phrase is bang, 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 where the pace has just been increased a lot. Oh! <laughs> One back. There's a response by Ipo. But yeah, you'll notice in those first four rallies, the pace was very high, it was just bang, 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 to the back, and then all, all cognizant on who hits the front shot, that's the better winner. And in the case of the first four rallies, it was Michael, but now you can see there's going to be a bit more variation of pace, and a bit more use of height by Michael, and hopefully up as well. We'll let Michael take over the, on that one. He gave his thoughts, and fair enough. I'd like to see Alpa use his backhand down the line a lot more if he gets into position. Oh, that's very yeah. lucky, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just as we're saying about the backhand, he hits a uh, forehand. Jammy, Jammy winner. Oh, yeah. That's called Jammy. But I would like to see that backhand down the line. He can play it well. That's what he can do here. Like that. See, down the line yeah. again. Oh, okay. <laughs> would she? Yeah. I think... It's very, very nice riffing for Heather, for Michael, obviously. The, the thing is, there, I see, you could see that he was trying to get there. Yeah. Did he really need to go for the big push into the wall? I mean, in terms from him, he's just received the no man for a similar situation. So he's oh, nice touch. Oh, oh, that's a great touch, oh. great angle. As we were saying before, he's obviously received a no let for the similar situation before. So he's trying to show that he's making every effort to get yes. to the ball. Which, of course, Heather in her reasoning said, I think he would have got to that. And so she's given a let, which is good on Michael's part for showing that effort. Ooh. Hence why he went for the whole shove and try and go, got, trying to go through upper to get to the ball. Well, we're at 5 all now on the 5th. After a decent lead for Shelton Agar. A couple of errors, a couple of winners. And Alpha Fadi Lath is completely back in it. Oh, and there was a... Oh, that's gone all the way up. Somebody running to get yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that was his uh, backhand down the line, but this time really didn't seem to time it yeah, at all. Yeah, he's trying to go for it short. So coming up shortly, we will have Glenn Templeton and Jack Condor. That'll be fun because uh, Glenn makes his way around the court, defies his own size sometimes against Jack Condor, the uh, human pinball. <laughs> Very good nickname for him. <laughs> yeah. Bouncing off the walls, sometimes getting stuck to them. Yeah, now Glenn and Jack will be interesting. Oh. Next few rallies are going to be very good. Oh, well, that's a good shot. So that's 7 and 6 up. So these next two yeah, three rallies are very important for deciding the result of the game. A nice comeback. Very nice comeback. Yeah, definitely. After this, that, that quick start for Michael, you wouldn't expect it, but up has shown his strength, mental strength, and he's. Oh, what a shot. Okay. Very good shot, but ultimately it's going to be play a let because they were unsure of the pickup. Well, great to have the explanations that you're giving us. Nice to hear from someone who does some riffing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, nice what a shot. Gee, it was disguised as yeah. well. You'd think he was going down the line, but he was able to change direction. Yeah, Michael's very good at um, showing, showing, showing the opponent something and then hitting something entirely different. Oh, oh, he's there. Go, he's he's there. Oh, go, go, go. He get it off the ground go, 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 go. too. Oh, oh what a retrieval. Come on. 
water retrieval, but up, and now he's still back in it. I don't know how. Oh, oh that's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was oh, fun to watch. Mike. I think Mike was kicking himself for hitting the ball oh. sim in a similar area to where Upper was falling over. <laughs> well, that was reminiscent of uh, Paul Cole's efforts that people have seen around the world. That was fantastic stuff. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Anybody watching? <laughs> oh, it's popped out. Well, <laughs> uh, just remember that up, Fadi Lofa. Might be a little bit bruised. He is also playing tomorrow. Yeah, he's got a bit of a limp going on. But <laughs> he hopefully, it's, hopefully it's all skin injuries. Nothing too, too major. Yeah, you got plenty more skin. <laughs> he is just 15 years old. The level of commitment he's shown for his age is very yeah, impressive. Oh, what nice job, Michael. Well controlled. Oh, no, no. That's interesting because it's been two five setters for Michael back to back as well. <laughs> yeah. He tends to play them, he <laughs> just does. Oh, it's a good drop. I think you could have called it on that one, but that was my thought. Mate, I'm a little bit obstructed. So on your, on your official's hat, what do you think? I didn't actually see the drops, so I wouldn't be able to tell, but... <laughs> Honestly... <laughs> it's interesting, because, um... Tom Duggan, obviously, who runs this tournament, told me when I started riffing the first week, oh, the second week, he said, there's a general rule, if one player reacts and the other one's quiet, then it's the wrong call. Oh. But if oh, oh, we've got a slippage. These guys really putting everything into it. Huh? What? These guys putting everything into it. They're in the Division 1, for want of a better phrase. Yeah. I guess you could say it's the bottom four. Yeah, yeah. Um, Still a very high division. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, the top four, the Premier, well, that's uh, Joel R. Scott, Leo Fatehilofa, yeah. Tenwa Chalisi, and Elijah Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I was saying before, as John was telling me, there's this, this, this a sort of rule you can go into making calls where, like, if one person's quiet and one person's like arguing, then it's the wrong call. If you've got both players that are arguing, then it's the right call, and both <laughs> players quiet, it's the right call. So it's very. That's a good point. <laughs> very nice interesting. Summing it up. Yeah. Obviously, it's from a player perspective. So yes. You know, you could still do the right call, and you'll still have the player obviously argue with it to try get try get his way. But. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching so far because this is very close and very entertaining. Players diving all over the show. Oh, oh, are we going to have a long and short? Short or long? Here we go, folks. Oh, surely. <laughs> Come on, man. Short or long, people? You want one oh, point yeah. or you want three? Yeah, you want. So it's going to play straight to 13 rather than playing straight to 11. If there's no more win by two, it's just straight. Straight. Whoever gets to 13 points first. It's a system that was used ages ago and John's brought it back just as a as a humorous scoring system for this event. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> great angle. Well played. 12-10. Here we go. I really hope you have enjoyed this, particularly this last game. It's been entertaining to say the Is least. He gonna shot? Oh no. for Apa Farilofa winning in five games. Wow, two, two, <laughs> two five series back to back for Michael. Unfortunately, this one wasn't didn't fall his way, but still a very entertaining oh, match. Very entertaining, yeah. going five. And congratulations there to Apa Farilofa. <laughs> what was that, 13-10 in the end? Yeah. Uh, well played.
yeah. and uh, good to see both players really give it heaps. So uh, well done to all of them there. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Hassan. And uh, we look forward to Glenn Templeton and Jack Condor the on the court yeah. shortly. <laughs>
So now the second match of this, the week four unsquashable Premier League. It is Glenn Templeton in the dark shade t-shirt. And he's up against Jack Condor, who is in the orange or day glow orange. These two players should be an interesting contest in the sense of the way they both play. Jack Condor from the Titarangi Club in West Auckland and Glenn Templeton from Catty Catty or Club in Bay County. Looking forward to having Katie Templeton come on as well. Lengthy rally. Ooh. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> that ball just died as it came right to the back of the court. Glenn Templeton, as we said, from Caddy Caddy in the Bay Committee, although Henderson's Squash Club are claiming it as well. So let's see if we can get anybody from Caddy Caddy coming through and supporting Glenn Templeton. Also, anybody from Tetarangi Squash Club? That's most of Jack Condor's family. They want to uh, raise their hand and say that they're here as well. Oh. Well, that was almost like a fake, but uh, certainly something you don't want to do too often. Uh, yesterday, Elijah Thomas also had the same issue as well, missing the ball completely, but recovering to compete in the point. What you'll see in this contest is that Glenn Tem Templeton will try and dominate the tee. Won't always look as though he's moving smoothly, but he's able to cover the court very well. And of course, the first match we had today was a five game epic 13 10 in the fifth to upper Philly Lofa over Michael Shelton Agar in 39 minutes. Two other matches remaining tonight or this afternoon. Joel Ascot up against Leo Fatialova will be entertaining for sure. And then Temwa Chalisi against Elijah Thomas. They've had some good encounters so far in the series as well. Staying a little bit low in the back corners. Jack Condor's been caught out a couple of times. Not too cold outside, it's still the afternoon rather than evening. Yesterday, Glenn Templeton was very measured in the way he played against Upper Fadi Lofa, whereas Jack Condor was a little bit up and down as he went to five against Shelton Agar as well. Again, deep into that corner, so Glenn Templeton playing a very efficient first game and taking that first game of this match.
Well, let's see what Jack Condor can do in this the second game. Drop the first with Glenn Templeton looking fairly solid, controlling the first game. Just looks fairly relaxed and happy to go about his business here, Glenn Templeton. Nothing too dramatic in what he's had to do. Oh, there's a good shot from Jack Condor moving up close to the wall and playing it strongly down the forehand side. And around the back. And top shot then. Great boast off the wall. But around the back from Jack Condor, we saw a couple of those. Well, at least one from Michael Schaffenegger and also a tweener as well. So we're getting the full variety of shots from all players. Also good to see some squash enthusiasts coming in to have a round on some of the back courts at Squash XL in Avondale. Oh. Held the ball nicely on the forehand and flicked it across court. Dominating that tee, but let's see if he can actually win the point on it, Glenn Templeton. So Katie Templeton, we're wondering if you're out there. We haven't heard from you yet. Heard from you most other days. If you're around, let us know. So, so far, a little bit better on the scoreboard for Jack Condor in this the second game after Glenn Templeton took the first. Again, just going to move forward. Is a very strong backhand. Oh. That played very nicely from Jack Condor off the back wall. Kept this cool on that one. Doing a lot of running though. Oh, well played. Nice touch from Glenn Templeton. Templeton's still only 18 years old and uh, Condor is 17, turns 18, I think it's in December. Great to have you with us, Winona Joe. Where are you, Winona Joe Joyce? You in the Hooks Bay at the moment? Good play by Jack Condor. Sticking around in this second game. Play. A bit tight in the right leg, it seems, for Jack Condor. Got a couple of points up. 
couple of unforced errors have helped Jack Condor as Templeton plays on the backhand. Almost his favourite shot. Jack Condor, but Templeton back into it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that was all over the place. Well done on the rally. Well done on the rally for both players. A wide variety of shots and eventually Glenn Templeton comes through after pushing Condor into the wall. Couldn't get the shot away on the forehand. Templeton took the first game fairly easily. And this second game, though, has been tight all the way. In fact, it's been Condor who's had a couple points to lead. They've been chopped away, though, for the last little while. It's a bit hard to tell who's actually going to win this uh, game at the present time. It's both players sticking to each other, no one really wrestling it, aside from two points that Jack Condor had at by Templeton. He really needs to push Condor into the back of the court. He used much better length there. It's about three or four shots pushing him into the corners. That will help. There we go. That's another one where the ball was pushed deep. It's got the game point now. So the tactics for this point and into the third should be keep it into the corners. It's very easy said than done. was a little bit difficult to see for the official Heather Finlay. Great to have her here with us as well. So thank you Heather Finlay over the last four weeks. Ooh. And the mistake there from Jack Condor. Game two goes to Glenn Templeton, 11-9.
Into the third game of this match between uh, Glenn Templeton and Jack Condor. These guys are only about a year apart in age. Templeton, 357 in the world on the PSA rankings. Condor yet to get a ranking. But certainly if he plays this well, and if there is any tournaments around the world, he'll be able to pick one up. It's Stewart High School. Mount over Bremer, nice recovery, not quite in the end. Using the corners again, Templeton. And we could see to the side of the court, Leo Fadilova warming up, stretching. Getting ready for his match against Joel Ascot after this. Spending a bit of time on the ground. So still 2-1 to Templeton after that lap. Shot. Templeton just taking his time moving forward again, getting into the tee. Good depth by Condor. Much better rally. Not quite. Just needed to stay in the rally for a couple more shots, it would have helped. And Glenn using that T very well during that point. Oh. 
very close to being above the line. Flick off the feet, Templeton. <laughs> and uh, Jack being told, well, if you're going to call it, call it. Don't do it halfway, and then afterwards when you lose the point. Maybe. Oh, a bit of thought there. You were lucky, I believe, on that one, Jack. The ball was flying through. If you had it got to it, well, it would have been well done. Ooh. Not sure if Jack Condor had it himself then. That's a better shot, much better shot. Take your time, Jack, and you'll do a lot better. He's been dictated to at the moment by Glenn Templeton, who's again playing a very efficient game, just like yesterday. Yesterday, though, for Jack Condor, it was a different story. It went five. He lost that in five to Schaffenegger. So maybe feeling that a little bit. And good to have a few spectators coming in and a few fans of the sport out on the back courts having a hit. That's what we want to see. And put away nicely there from Glenn Templeton. Got himself into a good position. Able to slap it away. Putting right in the corner. every ounce of his body into that one. He had a lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities there, Glenn Templeton. And finally winning it. So again, just like yesterday, a very solid and efficient performance from Templeton as he looks to wrap this up. <laughs> oh, there's the tweener. Nice carried across. Thank you. Oh, but not. Wasn't quite what we expected. He called it. And well played by. Glenn Templeton winning in straight and a very efficient, is the nicest way of putting it, display of that match taking around about 25 minutes, 11-2, 11-9 and what was that, 11-3 in the third, so well done to Glenn Templeton making it two wins from two in this, the final week.
And a tough loss there for Jack Condor after five yesterday, straight today. Coming up very shortly, Joel Ascott and Leo Fatialofa, the first match of the Premier League section. That should be a very interesting encounter to watch. Lots of shot making from Fatialofa and very much a planned approach from Joel Ascott. We hope you're enjoying it. And looking forward to that match coming up in just a moment, along with Tim Wachalisi and Elijah Thomas a little bit later on.
yeah. All right, we're underway, and this is the first game of the Premiership. This is Joe Lasko, he's in the dark green against Leo Fatialova in the... I don't actually know what color that is, but we'll call it a bluish color. Yeah, uh, blue-green. <laughs> yeah. And uh, joining me again, Hassan. We've been talking just as we came into this match about how many lets a player could <laughs> or should have. That's my rule. Yeah. Uh, uh, but just to have the combo games, there was a certain. Oh, there oh. we go. <laughs> Expected it. That was pretty early to do that. <laughs> Mate, it's Leo, you never know what yeah, you're going to get. Exactly. But yeah, just thinking about how the combo games, there was the call where you were able to ask for a, a video review. Yeah, yeah. I think it was limited to. I think current PSA is also limited to an extent. You see some tournaments where they only allow two reviews and then. It gets cool. overturned. Oh, I mean, you get your review back if the decision's overturned. So you, there's this discussion of limiting decisions as well. But currently, it is you know unlimited calls, which is some in some situations rightfully so because you get players that try to abuse that system, obviously. Yeah. All right. Well, let's review the two matches from earlier today. We did have a five-game epic. 13-10 in the fifth, and that was Upper Fadialova defeating Michael Schaldenegger, and then it was Glenn Templeton in that straight over Jack Condor. They're both now sitting down having a chat, having a bit of a joke on the yep. side of the court. And now onto this match. Just the first couple of points. Leo Fadialova, you're going to see a few shots from him. I've already seen one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, on the first point. Yeah. And great to have Paul Ascot coming in from Brisbane. And a lot of other players and fans from around New Zealand and Australia. Great to have you joining us. Yeah, great use of height by both players. Trying to move each other back. First by Dole and by Leo in, that, in the three shots before this. It's interesting because of them. <laughs> I remember the last time these two played, I think it was, was it last week or the week before? Uh, I think it might have been last week. I think Leo, so. Leo just had an absolute rocker of a game and just was slotting everything. <laughs> and Joel was like absolutely shocked at the level of the mix Leo was hitting. And obviously most of them weren't even on purpose, it just being in that right situation. Shot Joel, I mean Leo, sorry. Leo hitting those shots was absolutely a great watch. But the core conditions don't suit at this time, but it'll still be interesting to see whether Leo pulls off those shots that he did last time he played Joel. Well, that's the thing. He can reel off a whole heap of winners from any part of the court, and then the next shot, the next point, can be an unforced error. Yeah. The unpredictability is great. He's here where he quickly worked his way over. And, you know, he's served and then just worked his way over very quickly. It was almost half a step to actually get on the other half of yep. the court. <laughs> that was perhaps the longer way to go to get to that ball. Yeah. The thing is that Fanny Lofa did have the right position. He yeah. uh, didn't need to get out of the way on that one, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, no. the, the line in that situation is around there. So the ball is quite far away from the ground there. It was more central to the ball. The thing is, when you're playing against Leo Fanny Lofa, is that he has no distinctive pattern. So you can't think that he's always going to play down the line or anything like that. There's no, there's no distinctive pattern yeah, to his game. Nah. Which is a good and bad thing. Yeah. He has a nickname of Lucky Fatty. I love it because a lot of what he does seems like it's luck, but it's actually part of what he's planning to do or the way he plays. It's a fun style to watch, definitely. It is. The way he plays. So with, it, with his style, it means that as an opponent, you have to be very steady. Yes, yes, Don't try and out, out shoot him. Yeah, you're, no. you're not going to really win that. Oh, what a shot. 
Shell just off to a bit of a slow start here. But oh, yeah. That's actually, as we saw yesterday, he was off to a slow start against Elijah. Mm -hmm. I think it just, Joel's just kind of getting into the room and getting uh, properly warmed up into this game, into this match. Yeah, it does take him a while to warm up sometimes or warm into his rhythm. Yeah, yeah. There you go, 10 ball. Uh, Ten ball. <laughs> ten. <Yeah. laughs> game ball. Yeah, game ball. He's up to ten. They're jostling for the length on the back end. Nice and long. Back end good rally. And there's the switch from Leo. And Much better point by Joel. Oh. And there we go. It is 11-2, the first yeah, game. You can see with Joel drop, dropping and throwing his rack, he's not happy with that, but hopefully hopefully we'll see a recovery from him. He's a very good player in, in these situations. He's very good at coming off the court and thinking, what do I need to change, what do I need to do, and hopefully we'll see his response in the next game. Well, if you feel like letting us know who you think will win, should win, who you support, whether you're from the Henderson Squash Club, or whether you're from Australia, uh, in that sense, supporting Joel or from anywhere else, feel free to make a comment and uh, come on in and let us know who is uh, possibly going to win this or if you're enjoying the squash so far today. We've certainly had a wide variety of matches already. And uh, we do have one more day, one more match today, that is Tim Wachulisi and Elijah Thomas. And then, of course, one more day of this unsquashable Premier League it's been four weeks of plenty of squash. These players have been getting a lot of matches and it's been good for them as well because there isn't too much else around, whether it's New Zealand or anywhere. Yeah, that's definitely true. It's been one of those things. So uh, you've got to make the uh, best of what you can. And uh, well done to John Duggan and Squash Excel for putting this on, along with Unsquashable. Getting into this match, and it is Leo Fatialofa winning the first game, 11-2 against Joel Ascord. Fatialofa in one of his form sets where he just reeled off winners. Joel Ascord seemingly taking his time to get into the match. And I wonder if anybody watching has actually got any thoughts on that because it's so hard to play against Fatialofa when he's in that sort of form. Yeah, Leo's. <coughs> generic rule about Leo is that he's a very good starter. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And we see that quite often, actually. And, and we've seen it quite often in this um, Squash World Premier League. So it's kind of up to Joel. And, ooh, it's, it's nice of Leo, to be honest. There. Um, it's kind of up to Joel now to see what he can do about it and kind of nullify it and then kind of using his movement his technique build up build, build a kind of a rally that suits his style of play with more structure rather than structure rather than kind of jammy or not jammy just shot play generally well, i think what we saw as well was a, a few unforced errors from joel that we wouldn't necessarily see on other, other occasions oh, oh. oh. I did not think that was going up but i think 
Yeah, it went up. That was a great recovery yeah. from uh, Leo. You, yeah. you would you would have thought with Joel up near the net. Mm -hmm. The, near the net. <laughs> Mate, too <laughs> much tennis which, talk. Which uh, sport of the other one? But up near the front wall that he had it. Oh, another sh Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he just eats those up, Leo. Well, he folks, if you are watching this, uh, you're seeing Leo Valialofa come up with some great shots from all over the court. So enjoy it. And let's see what Joel Asker can do to actually come back into it. Joel will be trying to build it. Oh, That's a great yeah. shot. Held it well. Yeah, very good hold. Was he going to go across? Was he going to go down the line? Yeah, you can tell with this guy. <laughs> the other thing is he managed to hit it so it stayed so low. Yeah. All right, let's see the focus here. Holding the racket up the grip. Across with the backhand. Joel tried to build a bit more of a structure in the rally, but, but that's the he's, gone, he's gone short very early and unfortunately made an error there. We don't see that too often on that shot or any shot from Joel. So yeah. maybe he's feeling the pressure of being forced into it. Yeah. Good shot there. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, smart nice by shot. Joel. Very good short shot, and then Leo having to recover, and then Joel just puts it away on the back end. Folly. The call being yes, let there. Yeah. Okay. That's oh. reasoning provided. He's moved out of the yeah. way. That's yeah, look pretty. That looks pretty. That looks fine actually. He, he was. He looked to be sufficiently just enough out of the way. Ooh. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's unfortunate. unfortunate. He was there. Ooh. Hit it with such angle mm. that it's just tipping above the line, and then coming back and bouncing. Really yeah, it up. stayed really close to the front wall with that. You see Joel slightly missed out of distance, and he came up slightly short. Well, we really seem to be getting a lot of low bouncing balls in that forehand sign up close at the moment. Yeah. It's the way forehand that kills. Leo hits. Oh, another one. <laughs> you you see, he, if he gets a sniff, he just goes for it. Yeah. And most of the time, he gets them. This time though. Nah. So now we see Joe hopefully Joe starts building a bit more structure. Trying to cut all the shots that Leo tries to play. Just kind of lock him down in the back. Yeah, see that's good. Nice shot. Moved him to the back and he picked him off as soon as there was the Well this has been shot. the sort of stage that Leo's got that initial lead. Yep. It's about holding it. And this yeah. has been with this stage where he's fallen away a little bit at times. Yeah, this is the nullifying part that we were talking about earlier. Oh, that's a good play. Unfortunate for Joel. It was a good shot by Leo. So Joel's caught up a bit in terms of the scoreline, but ultimately these next two points are very important. impressive was able to take it yeah. on the full play yeah, it through. If, if Leo gets this game, it's a very big advantage for him. Well, we wonder if we've got any Leo uh, Fadilo for supporters out there. If they were impressed with that shot. Let's see if he can make it two games to love. Obviously this point's the hardest one. Oh. <laughs> Joel's not going to sit there and no. just give it's him not a gonna give away. Yeah, it's very... 
Leo will either have to get his point off for error by Joel or he's going to have to get a really good shot in, which will be hard. Ooh, oh, as soon as I say that. Gee, he was almost in the wall. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, that's good play by Joel. That's good play by Joel. So what's he referring to? Because uh, the ref hit us unsure whether the pickup was alright. It's very unfortunate for Joel, it was a good rally. Yeah, well, I thought he had made it back and was just putting yeah. a bit more pressure on, yeah. still one point behind. Yeah. But now he's the two points back again for the yeah. lap. It was a very good strike for Joel, he'd set himself up that, to win that rally, so now he's going to have to see whether he can. Oh, that's a very tight shot. Yeah, too. Leo down. Oh, 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 oh. oh, it's there for Leo. It's, it's one of his favourite shots. He seems to do it so well, yeah. like he did on the very first point yeah. of the match. His footing was off slightly there. He wasn't very balanced. He couldn't, couldn't set himself up right for that shot. Still important to remember, Leo does still have the game ball there. Joel still has to keep his structure and then try and pin this, pin this rally and get the ball to the game at 10 all and what's a good shot by Leo? A little dink. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Oh short along. Short. short. Oh the caller short. Okay. Next Yesterday point wins the game. Yep. So there's a big comeback by Joel. Oh, he had it though, he, he had two times he had game ball. Yeah. Now Joel's kind of keep, trying to keep it tight on the backhand. Oh, there's a shot. That's a good play. Call is a let, so we're still going yeah, next point wins. Yeah. I mean, fair oh. call on the let there. Yeah. Oh, both players are moving very fast, hitting it very hard as well. Oh, he's got to get that serve on the side wall, otherwise Leo would pick it off. Oh, that's a nice dink again. Oh, that's a good play. Oh, what a, that was a great comeback yeah, by Joel. Indeed. And all of a sudden, against him. all of a sudden, we have a game on our hands. <laughs> Indeed. It's almost like we expected it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of called it a little bit there, right? Eh? Yeah. Kind of expected that to happen. It was going to be tough uh, for Leo Fadiolofa to close it out. He did have 10-8 then 10-9. Wasn't able to get it on those occasions. So let's come back for the third game in just a moment.
Well, we're back into the third game of uh, Leo Fatia Lofa against Joel Ascot. It was Fatia Lofa taking the first easily, 11 2, and having a good lead in two game balls, or game points in the second. But Joel Ascot won it on the short. It was 11 10. And it was pretty much how we expected it to go in many ways. That Leo Fadialova had that lead yep. uh, earlier on and then wasn't quite able to finish it. Then had the game balls, thought he could get it on that short. What do you think? Thought yeah. he could get it on that short? Yeah, he thought, he thought Joel might give him almost a shot that was loose enough for him to just pick and pick him to the neck. But um, obviously Joel, credit to him, kept the structure and kept Leo yeah, locked up on the backhand side and ended up winning that, that crucial point. Now he's got a decided advantage into this third game. So he's got the lead, Joel Ascot, on this, the third game. So it's amazing how fortunes change and turn. I believe Leo had three game balls there, which would have been really crucial, but Joel being. What's it, what's it called there? Joel being the professional he is, just knuckled down and kept those rhythm and lock Leo out of that game. Feel free to have an opinion or a thought on any of the styles or the way the match has actually proceeded. That's yeah. a good shot. A good hold, yeah. And we still have one more match to uh, go this afternoon. It is Tim Wachelisi against Elijah Thomas. That will be a very good encounter. Because Elijah Thomas, was it week two? Week two, yep. Yeah, Elijah defeated Temwa Chalisi. That was a good match. Yep. And then last week, I believe, Temwa had to win over Elijah. It's quite interesting in this game between Paul and Leo. At the end of that, uh, at the end of that third game, Joel actually, Joel actually put a lot of work into Leo's legs. And Joel, in this game, being the physically superior player in terms of fitness now, has a big advantage in this game, as is reflected in the scoreline. Um, I believe it's 6 2. Double check, I'm not too sure if that's correct, and I will see after this point. But using his superior fitness, has actually locked Leo out and just made Leo move around the court. And now Leo is on the back foot. He's not being able to play shots anymore as confidently. Oh, as soon as I say that. <laughs> yeah. Uses Commentators the curse. He holds the ball very well and that gives him an opportunity to choose the angle or which side of the court he wants to actually put the ball. So 3-7 being the score line. So now Leo's had a bit of a chance to try and see how he responds. Joel is already in his own By Leo. Oh, and there you oh. see he went for the shot but he, didn't, he wasn't, didn't have the time to set himself up and therefore couldn't get don't it think the turn. He didn't quite have his feet in the right place nah, on that one. No. Pressure put on him by Joel, he's not, he's not able to do that. Now you can see the points are getting quicker and quicker because the work, work that Joel's put into Leo's legs is catching up to him. So the world rankings, uh, the question about that. And uh, Joel Ascot on 235, that's his high. And Leo Fatialofa uh, is 380, his high has been 368, I believe. So that's game ball to Joel in a very, very quick third game. And yeah, there you see that. And there it is. So that is a game number three to Joel Ascot taking that one out. And he now leads by two games to one. And just remember that these players are still very young. Leo Fatialofa is 17 and Joel Ascot 20 years old. So uh, it is a very young tournament. The oldest player in this week is Michael Schalkenegger. I think last week it was... Uh, Lance Bidos. Yeah, Lance yeah, Bidos. 27? Uh, 27. 27. Yeah, 27. So yeah. it has been... Good for the youngsters around New Zealand who want to make a, a name and want to make a job, no. occupation of squash, yeah. to really have a go. This is the fourth and final week of the Unsquashable Premier League.
scooped it up very nicely and was yeah. able to take the pace off it. Yeah. So anybody wondering what's happening after this tournament finishes tomorrow evening? Well, there's the Northland Open. I know that Timwa and I think John are both playing that. Yep, the both of them are playing that. And, and then on. Jack Conda Pinball's also going up there okay, as well. Okay, so he's going to, and probably Riley Jack uh, Better Broncos might yeah, be. Yeah, he's they'll, from they'll, they'll be quite interesting because um, obviously last year in the under 17 age group, Jack and Riley had quite a quite a few matchups mm. playing for the title for the under 17 champion. And from memory, Riley came out on top more often than not. So. Yeah. You know, it'll be quite interesting to see those two play after this lockdown saga has happened and the break's gone by. So it's an opportunity for players, particularly Tenwar and uh, Joel, to... It, it's not points, unfortunately. Uh, there's uh, no PSA, yeah. satellite or anything like that at the moment. But it's an opportunity for them to try and earn a living as such. Uh, it's, you've got to make what you can yeah, at the moment yeah. and after that I think it's uh, a local tournament in Papakura in Auckland. Yeah I believe there's a few tournaments in Auckland starting up. Yeah, but it's not quite what these guys should be playing and Auckland Open perhaps but, but you know really it should be things like a North Island Champs maybe or yeah, South Island like Champs yeah. and then leading up to the Nationals which is now late August. Yeah or playing satellites overseas or challenges if you can get into them, things like that. But unfortunately that's just the way of the world at the moment. No one's able to play PSA satellite challenger or PSA events at all. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously this is the last last week in terms of the unsupposed in the Premier League from New Zealand, but it's been good to have some squash to watch, especially on Squash's main channel on YouTube. Yeah, that's um, so great for the PSA to yeah. uh, host this unsquashable Premier League. Yeah, and it shows people that, you know, there's still people, it shows out there in the world where there are no, where there's no squash happening that, you know, don't give up hope, squash will come back soon. We see in this uh, fourth game, Leo's had a strong start, 6-2 up. Joel just a little bit frustrated with himself, Ooh, making seven quick points in era after era, so now it'll be interesting to see we could be going to the fifth. Oh, it really has been a roller coaster. Ooh. Nice reactions yeah. to get back into it. Sure, what he was after there for Joel. What yeah, not too wanted. sure. I think maybe he thought it double bounced before Leo hit it off the back wall, but not too sure what Joel I think also was. A bit of frustration. Yeah. Finding himself down so quickly. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh. I would have given that a little bit personally. Yeah, but, that was a tight one to call. Yeah. But that's alright. I think, I think maybe Heather saw that his movement was a lot closer. Then what we can see from our English commentators, he must have been. Nice play. Oh, that's a good shot by Leo. He must have been uh, yeah. looking to be a lot closer to the ball. It's great to have our friends in Australia coming in. I think we've got most of uh, Queensland squash. Uh, most of the players in Queenstown, uh, Queensland uh, supporting us. Great to have you with us. Thanks for watching. Oh, nice oh, play. Trickle boast. Yeah, very much. a top shot, able to <laughs> hold it. It didn't look as though it had much pace at all, but it had enough and then oh it was able to fade, goodness. wasn't it? Yeah. Honestly, the shots, sometimes the shots that he pulls out, eh? <laughs> They're quite remarkable. Yeah. You can't do much about them. Yeah, especially if they're good and right into the So, score being 5-9. Leo's had a very, very good start. Oh, and there's a... Oh. Oh. Just 
time. Okay. Game ball. So. Don't let those game balls go this time, Leo. You let them yeah. go last game. Reminder that Leo had three game balls and then Joel pulled it back. Let's see how this oh. Oh, oh, this looks like. Oh. Nice angle. That's a shot and a half. Oh, oh, that's a great rally. A great rally. Cool. Those shots to the front wall are so close to the front wall. And there was some good reactions there from Joel Ascott that saved that point, saved the game. Oh, and there's, there's the error there. Uh, not this time. Well, we are going, uh, we're going five. Five setter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Another one. Been seeing a lot of those today. This has been quite a lengthy match as well for, for these two players, for the way Leo plays. And. Uh, in the end, Leo Fadilofa taking that to take it to five, and oh, who knows? It's not quite going the way that we expected now. So uh, well done there to Leo Fadilofa. Back with the fifth, very short. Well, here we are with the opening of the fifth game. This is the first of the premier matches tonight. So, Hassan, the discussion there was that whether it was a double bounce or whether nah, it was I think Joel believed uh, he scooped it on his racket. Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, from here it looked, it was fine, it looked clean. It looked yeah, that, like that's... We, we're seeing a similar view to uh, Heather Finlay. She's just on a slightly different angle to yeah. us. Looked okay from here. But when you're that close to the ball, it can look totally different. It's a better shot. Interesting here because um, Leo's obviously taken it to five with Joel, and now both players are in a position to take out the match. Now, that's quite a rarity to have Leo even make a comment, mm. particularly something like that. I mean, he's usually he might just say, Is that a letter? Or something, but for him to shake his head and. Yeah, I mean, maybe he felt it was a bit harsh. Um, obviously in the fifth game, everything's up 110%. <laughs> yes, yeah, so obviously in the fifth game, everything's exacerbated and now any call will definitely get a reaction by both players, or at least one of them. Well, the other thing is, for Joel, for Joel, he wants to win this because he knows he's got to play Timur in theory. Yeah. Pretty much for the... The title, yep, yep. tomorrow. And in theory, assuming that Tim White beats Elijah in this last match, which is going to be tough. So, oh, that's a shot and a half. A loss from either Joel or Tim today 
puts him at a slight disadvantage tomorrow. Yeah, and it could bring about the idea that we might end up having a champion that's not yeah. in the two pros in the comic itself. That was very good play because it was jammed against the wall. Yeah. In fact, the back wall and the side. That was really wall. tight. That was a tight shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Leo's, Leo's getting his shots in and now. Well, that one Joel's was on the back foot. Cut away from his body. Yeah. Taking a bit of pace and keeping it low. Yeah, Joel's lost a bit of his structure now and now Leo controls the game. And I'm not wasting the rallies. So now we're going to see Joel try. Oh, that was Ooh, it's a good game. Run to the corner again. Oh, oh great another pick great up. get. And now Leo's trying to control the rally, but Joel's recovered really well there. Let's see if Leo can keep his head. Oh, oh, oh gee, that's a shot. Yeah, wow. That's amazing retrieval by Joel. Yeah, yeah. That's well amazing done. retrieval by Joel. Leo tried to put him away, but Joel's movement was too strong there. You know, there was several occasions he had opportunities, thought he had won it. Yeah. That's into the deep corners. Oh, another shot by Leo. Scoop. Oh, that's an error by Leo now. Now Joel's in it. Just that, that was cheapest. Just like that. He had possibly two points, two shots where he could have gone out to a seven point lead. This is maybe the most interesting point of the whole match. I don't think anybody's worthy of a stroke here. No, yes? No, I would have. Oof. Hard to see that with a. It was between a lead and a no lead, I'd say. Oh, that one comes off. Oh, oh that, nice that's shot. a. Daxi. Although I think at this point Leo is trying to almost guess where the shots are coming he, from Joel. Is Leo trying to rush it too much now? Yeah, he's trying to go for winners really early now. Trying to go short too early. He's lost a bit of that control in the game just now. Three or four points. Yeah, and now you can see Joel's, Joel's body language has actually changed completely. He's got this, his facial expression is way more aggressive. And oh, what well played? He's more aggressive, like he's walking around the, around the court with his chest up. You can see the whole body demeanor has changed, and now he's got the lead. I just think we are. Got a couple of shots that didn't go his way, maybe a decision. Oh, oh that was down. And tried to rush it to finish it off yeah. too quickly. Yeah. Going short too early. Which for a guy like Joel is like. It's like feeding him the push, literally, because a guy who's so structured like Joel will either put it away on the back or just have a good short shot. And then that puts somebody like Leo, who's not known for his running under heat suppression. There being a lead. So it's 9 6. I don't think you could really call anything else on that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was a bit of a weird, weird situation for a lead. Like, Joel looked like he was ready to play it, and then there was that interference. Ball play through it. A nice use of the angle. Oh. Oh. Okay. I couldn't see any double there myself. Yeah. All well, the tensions increased here a little bit, coming towards the end of the fifth game. So this is the fifth game between these two, Leo Infantilo and Joel Ascot. Not too much. Oh, 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 nice. <laughs> oh, and now Leo's come back with us oh, enough. Jesus. Two points going his way. Brings him back into it. Just one point behind. So Joel's looking to. That one. Joel's looking to imprint structure in this rally, but Leo's trying to just survive for now. Leo scrambling to stay in. Oh, oh, and he goes for the cheap, cheap shot. It's just that cheeky little shot. Yeah. It didn't quite come off. Yeah, credit to Joel for putting Leo under that kind of pressure so that he had to play that shot. And there it is. That was a great match to watch. Well done.
rebound. And taking that one, 11-8 in the end, and uh, well done to Joel Ascot. That was an exciting match and a good match to watch. Yeah, definitely. It was actually a pretty good match in terms of the contrast of styles, and obviously you had Leo with his shot-making ability, and then you have Joel with his very structured play. It's very good to see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, there was an opportunity there for Leo Fadilova in the fifth. Definitely. He did have a little bit of a lead. He then let it, let it go with yeah, a couple a little of straight bit of shots. patience there. And I think maybe fitness, his um, physical condition caught up a little bit. Because yeah. playing a guy like Joel, Joel is a very fit character. You know, like, he, he does, he, obviously he lives at Excel and he trains nearly every day. Mm. And to match that kind of conditioning is very hard. Yeah. So he, in, in nearly every match in this tournament that he goes into, he has a decided physical advantage, which he, to his credit, plays very, uses it very smartly. And as we saw in this case in the fifth, Leo in the fifth was getting very tired and going short very early to try win the rally and in the end that cost him the match. Yes it did, a little bit of impatience and uh, now, well two players that are, <laughs> I wouldn't say impatient but they want to get on with it, is <laughs> Jim Julicia and uh, Elijah Thomas, they want to get on with it. It's only a couple of minutes past when we went to schedule and so let's just see what happens with this particular contest here and uh, I think we're in for a good one. I'll let you go and uh, go and watch or uh, get back on the training yourself. <laughs> Cheers for your input. It's been Hopefully two years time it. I get to this kind of level, eh? <laughs> nah, a bit more longer than that. <laughs> Cheers, mate.
Jack, can you get Joel, please? And welcome in for this, the final match of today. It is the Premiership match. Temwa Chalisi, the 19-year-old, up against Elijah Thomas, the 17-year-old. So we've got plenty of teens in this tournament. And it, and it is Chalisi ranked 337, who won the Eden Epson Premier League, make that Eden Epson Satellite Tournament earlier this year in Auckland. And Elijah Thomas ranked 257, who was Runner-up in the Henderson Open, lost to uh, Evan Williams in the final there. So these two are sure to have a good contest. Don't forget we've already had a couple of five games matches today. One of them was Michael Schottenegar against Upper Fadialofa. Fadialofa winning that 13-10 in the final. Glenn Templeton then defeated Jack Condor in straight games. And then we had Joel Ascott winning in five over Leo Fatihalo. So plenty of good squash so far today. And this match underway for Timur Chalisi in the white. And in the blue it is Elijah Thomas. And joining me in just a moment is Joel Ascott, who had that tremendous five-game win. So we'll just let him get his breath back. And uh, he'll be here to help me with this particular match. And a great backhand there by Tewa. We're going to see some long rallies and some good shot making as well. So feel free to uh, give us your thoughts on who might come through in this particular match. The rally. If that's the way it's going to be, we're only in the early stages. It'll be a long match, but it'll be a good match. So Chalisi just got the initial lead. These two players have uh, had a good record against each other. It's in week two, I think it was, that uh, Elijah Thomas was able to beat. Chalisi in what was the semi-final then. Nice little chip right off his body. It's been a fast start, fast points. You see how the fitness goes for both of these players. They've been deep into this game for all four weeks. And a quick start, 5-1. Elijah Thomas just shaking his head. And an explanation about coronavirus restrictions in New Zealand. Well, there's pretty much none. Um, we are still in, we are actually still in lockdown two. And on Monday we're expected to have it confirmed that we'll go to lockdown one, which is pretty much means the virus is totally under control. There is only one case in New Zealand at the present time. All squash clubs in New Zealand can play as per normal. So uh, this tournament has been underway for the last four weekends, as soon as we hit level two. You're now allowed to have crowds at sporting events within reason. And then from what we think will be Wednesday, you're allowed to have larger crowds as well. Well 
time there, Elijah Thomas. And uh, Joel Ascott, you uh, got your breath back after that tough encounter against Leo Fatih Lotha? Yeah, I mean, more, more mentally tough than anything else. I'm not physically tired. I just uh, had to punish myself with 100 burpees after that. Just wasn't feeling satisfied with myself, so um, nothing 100 burpees can't fix. So uh, they're probably the worst exercise. I think is that yeah. the exercise you dislike the most? Yeah, um, definitely that. And playing playing Leo, as I'm sure the viewers saw. Players seem okay uh, with that call. One, one of the things, Joel, and I think in your game as well, it, it, it can be quite difficult when you're not at ground level, not in that court, to judge on a double bounce as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, I think at this court, actually, it's a little bit harder to see them because. Um, the colour of the floor and the ball, um, after, after a while, the more you hit that ball, yeah. if you get a stencil on your, um, so your engraving of the brand on your racket, that black part um, actually paint sort of rubs off on the ball, and it right. turns blacker and blacker as the um, match goes on, the more they hit it. And right. although the, the balls are new at the start of every match, um, yeah. you know, after maybe 15, 20 minutes, that ball starts to go a lot darker, yeah. and um, very similar. Um, colour to the floor, especially um, right. when you're looking from up here down on the ball, it's really hard to spot, so I don't blame the referees. Um, no, I, I mean, the other thing is, when you're, when you're right there as an opponent... It yeah. seems very obvious when you're right there, of yeah. course, um, but again, you know, when you're standing upstairs as well, the, the players can be in, in, in front of the ball, so it's, you got to um, give referees a bit of doubt sometimes. Just call it as they see it, don't they? So, oh, shot. That's well Great shot. Well, yeah, it does make it easier also when you have a, a scorer with you. There's, there's two officials. Yeah, that does help. Tim was off to a good start in this match. Quite a fast Seeming game. Very, so. uh, very sharp. Elijah seeming a little bit off the, off the ball at the, from the end of the set. Might be feeling the effects of uh, of yesterday. Yeah. Oh, oh, great shot. Can't do much about that though, can you? Right. There we go. That is game one. Two. Too much. We see taking that one after a very fast start. A little bit of a moderate comeback in the middle by Elijah Thomas, but uh, I think both players just started like they were on turbo. Uh, the, the rallies were quick. There was no one being able to slow it down and just ease the pace up. It was one pace and it was a fast mm. pace. Yeah. All right, we'll come back with the second game in just a moment.
Well, Joel Lasker, as we get into this, the second game, Tim Wachalisi taking the first, 11-5 against Elijah Thomas. Is there any particular pattern we should be looking to with these guys? I mean, they both play um, relatively with contrasting styles. Um, Tim was sort of tactic is usually to to move the ball around the court with holds and you know varying lengths. Um, but also he hunts the ball great across the middle um, as well, and he's really really strong from the the mid court with his straight drops and his bows. And um, Elijah hunts the ball a lot around the middle of the court, but he's a little bit more of a counter puncher. So it's quite a good um, good matchup between these two. What was it a couple of weeks ago in the semi-finals as such that Elijah came through and uh, beat Tim well? And then you had a tough encounter in the final of week two. Yeah, I feel Tim was sort of figured Elijah's game out a little bit more than what he what he had in that first week, I think. Yeah, he's a good professional kind of kind of kind of bloke, you know. Does his match analysis, does his game plans. Um, Prepares well, and I think the last two oh, encounters nice. with Elijah have, have shown shown that, which is uh, yeah credit to credit to Timwa. What I'd like to see from these two is one of them take the initiative and play a long rally down the backhand side, and just see if it tests the opposition enough. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I think Timwa's tactic is sort of to not let Elijah get into a rhythm around that backhand service box area which is uh, the pattern he likes to play and then look for that counter drop, doesn't he? So, yeah, Tim, we're trying to switch it a bit more and hold and, you know, change the links. This is more what I was expecting from Elijah than Tim switching it. Tim doesn't really seem to be t playing two shots the same at the moment. Mm. But it's definitely working in his favour. Because in the past, what we've seen is uh, Elijah play that backhand ball. He likes it. Yeah. He hasn't so far today. Yeah. He's definitely trying to use that channel on that left wall, but Tim much just not really letting him get into a rhythm on that side. And uh, sort of forcing Elijah to open up the court, isn't he? And then Tim was just picking him off. Yeah, oh, I see that one coming. The way he played the ball almost, I'm not sure how I could describe it, almost a top spin. Turn, turned his shoulders yeah, left yeah. and then hit the ball into the sidewalk. for Elijah on that kind of drop. Goes in, racket out in front, left leg. Tim was, Tim was right there to hit it, wasn't he? It's just yeah, too, he too good. Oh, that was one of the a good rally there for Elijah. That will give him a bit more confidence. And he gets a reward too. A soft error from Tim after a lengthy rally. It's a bit of a sign for, for Elijah. Quick play. stuff. That's much better play from Elijah Thomas in this particular game, forcing his way back in. Phil Tim was slightly dropped off here. Didn't quite get that ball high enough. Yeah. And people should remember that tomorrow from 3 p.m. we'll have the playoff matches. And the final, albeit in a round robin 
format. So stick around to watch that from 3 p.m. New Zealand time tomorrow. So a couple of points coming down that backhand wall for Elijah. Doing well now. Keep him on trap behind him there. It's just so hard to see, I feel, um, without yeah. that, that sky view camera, because you can't really tell when you're watching from behind the court exactly. how far the ball away the ball is from the player. Oh, nice. Oh, he's gone around him. <laughs> oh, not quite. It's a very subtle hold there. And um, <laughs> just getting that ball out of reach of Elijah. And we would like everybody to tell their friends and family to watch. Tomorrow we want to make it one big last hurrah for this unscotchable Premier League. Tell your clubs, tell your regions, because without your own clubs and regions supporting players, there really isn't much support. So we want the clubs, oh nice reaction. So I think Joel, you'll agree, without clubs, getting behind their own players and without regions getting on behind their own players you know you can't expect other people from the public to do it yeah I mean without without clubs there's, there's no squash without squash down the sport yeah so um so hopefully people remind their clubs remind their friends to get in behind these players we know who the eight players are it's the last matches tomorrow they all come from clubs they all come from regions let's get everybody getting behind them tomorrow Yes, we know it's a weekend, but you know, that's just the way it is. It doesn't take much for a few people to join in and watch. Slightly longer exchange now. Getting to the business end. Oh. Good left. It's in. Great long. Oh, nice, oh, nice play. Well played. Away from his body. Tim was just putting a few too, a few too many balls on ET's racket. Oh. oh. I think maybe that the wall's getting slippery now. It's later on. Maybe. Nice recovery. Oh. oh. He got his racket underneath there. Well, we saw Elijah miss a ball like that yesterday, and then today Jack Condor, I think, missed one as well. So it's been happening over the last couple of days. Maybe it's fatigue from a lot of matches, or just I'm not sure. He seemed, to, he seemed to actually get down to that ball, but couldn't get on the front wall properly. Serve, wasn't it? <laughs> that seems to always be the case when your opponent asks for a let, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, nice touch. He's got it back. Oh. Yeah. Good night. So still opportunity for Elijah Thomas. This second game, very close. That's it. Oh! No. Well, Timo's not going to give up. No. Fighting his way back into it. He's just got to take his time here and set himself up for the right shot. Don't try and rush it. A very high serve. Pretty big rallies now. Yes, 
still got the one point lead. Oh, good Jesus. squeeze. Tight on the wall. Is that pattern? Oh. Oh, he did well. So, I mean, it was going to be hard for it. Well, it was going to be hard for Timur to get out of the way, and it was going to be hard for Elijah to get through it, right? I think Timur's got a good point there, because he held, he held the shot a little bit, and then mm. Elijah stopped, and then... His momentum was kind of going backwards, even though, even though his body was going forward. It didn't really look like he was... So who's the advantage? Get to it. Yeah. The player going forward or the player going backwards? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I probably would have given that a let, to, to, be, to be fair, to both of them. Shot quality was pretty good. Because that is the thing. If you're going forward to retrieve it, or if you're going backward to get out of the way... Mm. I think another thing is when, when the ball hits that side one, it comes back out, even though it might be very, very low to the ground, mm -hmm. it still looks bad because it's coming out back towards the player. Um, hence why um, the coaches nowadays try and go floor first. So that, oh! oh, oh, oh. oh. Bit of controversy, maybe, into, well, into those I mean, last few points. I think both players, because there was way that, ways that they could win or come back on that. Mm. I think. Um, so, yeah. I think there's, there's really, it's a very fine line, isn't yeah. it? But I think um, the right call was made. Yeah. And it's. When both players are that close to the wall and the ball's staying low, oh, so we've got a blood. Oh, okay, so we've got blood. Okay. Got blood now from Elijah's fingers. Okay. It's only a matter of time, really, with some of the movements that were going on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we were. Yeah. Everything was happening there, and it was Elijah Thomas taking the second game at 11-9. Temwa Chalisi took the first 11-3 in what is a very exciting final match for the second day of week four. Don't forget, we're coming back tomorrow for the final day of the entire competition from 3 p.m.
And we're back in for the third game. Timo Chalisi in the orange shirt now. And Elijah Thomas in his blue shirt. And Joel asked it was an interesting conclusion to the, the second game. We had a couple of calls that were disputed. A couple of calls that were disputed and Elijah also, I think he's got some tape or he's got something with his finger, some blood there somewhere. Yeah, I can't really, I can't see any tape. Um. Oh, he seems to have cleaned up the blood, which was quite interesting that he pulled out of his own first yeah. aid kit. Yeah, he's <laughs> uh, prepared. clearly. Um. Not um, not a stranger to the old dive on court, so he's got his, got his big first aid kit that he carries around. Very well prepared. Well, it's, it's sensible. He's always yeah. in the wars. He's always got scars on his knees, Elijah. <laughs> or, um, on his fingers. <laughs> I'm not sure how long the uh, break was, but including the, the blood. I think it might have been three minutes, but it wasn't, it wasn't much longer than that. So not a real disruption. Yeah, starting off at a frantic pace in this rally. Let's see if anybody can slow it down. Control it a bit. Oh. Oh, a nice shot. Just uh, had the pace. And Elijah Thomas stepped to his right as uh, Tiamo Chalisi played it down the left, strongly down the backhand side. Using the back corner well, recovered, and Tim Wachalisi now using the front. Certainly an all court rally. Is just loosening up a little bit. Quite open play. All right. Well, they both called that one. But that would, that particular rally was every corner of the court. Yeah, it was a little bit. A few balls clipping the side wall, and a lot of balls around the middle of the court there. So as we come to the conclusion, I mean, we've still got tomorrow. Do you think that every player who's taken part, there's been a few come in, come out, yep. has got something out of this? Because there's no other tournaments to play. There's no PSA satellites, there's nothing like that. Yeah, I think from um, the young pro perspective, um, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, being a professional right now, or a young pro like we all are in this tournament, it's pretty grim. Um, yeah. There's not it's, much it's, on the it's horizon. It's, it's just the way of the world at the moment. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's not very often this would happen in an athlete's career. Mm. So yeah, it's just dealing with that, isn't it? Um, but no, it's an opportunity for all of us to get back out on court and compete. Um, that's what we love to do. So um, a little bit of prize money as well. Big, big help, obviously. Oh, good counter. Good counter work from Tim with that. So he's running away with it a little bit here, 6 2. Elijah just not finding his length, I feel, so far in this set. What about for some of the younger players? Like today, Upper Fare Lobo had Jack Condor every week. They've uh, so would you say that we've had uh, Mason Smells in there, we've had uh, Jack Condor, Jack, Upper, uh, yeah. Upper, yeah. different players, you 
they say that they've improved their games and their attitudes and how they do it. Yeah, I think it's just what the, this tournament's really about is just providing an opportunity, isn't it? Mm. Um, players can do what they want with that, to be honest. Um, but. Yeah, you've got to call them that. I feel like that one was a bit more of a stroke than the last one, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, probably. Interesting with uh, Hassan up here, and he's been doing a lot yeah. of refereeing. Good Hassan. And for him to have, he said, looking at it from this point of view, it's a different perspective for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. So he, he's quite enjoyed that. And then he's sort of looked across and uh, at the referee. And yeah, I guess can, uh, judge we him. can sort of... We can sort of see from the left side of the court almost. We're mm. sort of in line, yeah. just out of line with the uh, the left wall, whereas the referees on the other side of the court. So we can sort of see round them um, when the ball might be right in front of their view. Maybe the players need body cams. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Have to go ultra slow mo to get get any view on those. It'll probably be a good coaching tool. I know, I've, I've actually I've googled it before. Right. A couple, a couple of videos on on YouTube. Right. Um, of people playing with those GoPros on their forehead, on their chest. <laughs> That's a very GoPro on their head. <laughs> that ma makes you pretty dizzy, um, <laughs> as well as make you look a bit a bit silly, I guess. That's pretty hard to watch. Good oh, shot. I'll shot. Right into that corner. So he's managed to hold off um, Elijah pretty well in this set. He was a little bit of a resurgence to 5-7, now it's 8-5. Oh, nice. Good start. So 10-5. Much more controlled in this particular game, Tim Wachalisi, and uh, hard for Elijah Thomas to force his way back in. Tim was just moving um, Elijah around the court, it feels a little bit more than what he's getting, getting moved himself, especially into the front. Just as I say that, uh, yeah. very, very nice straight drop in the front from Elijah. I think he might, might need some more blood on. Might have some more blood in his hand now after that drive, but. Well, last time he took the first game 11 5, it was then a real battle to actually come back in the second, and it was Elijah who won it. So let's see whether the pattern fits and goes the same way. But at the moment, it is Timur Chalisi, two games to one up, and that's the final match of today. Back with the fourth game in just a moment.
And now for the fourth game, Timo Chalisi against Elijah Thomas. Been exciting so far with, well, Timo taking the first and the third. What was it, 11-5 and 11-5 in both of those. But Elijah Thomas, the second, 11-9. And Joel Arscott, some good rallies, competitive rallies. Yeah. Wow. It's probably what we'd expect. Oh, there's a bit of a false shot. We didn't yeah. expect to see that. It's a good opening rally there, but a bit of a fluff. Um, but it was pretty competitive that last game as well, but I th just the momentum um, slightly favouring Timur um, towards the end. But Elijah will be coming out firing. He's a real battler. Oh, great shot. A little bit out of character, that shot for Elijah. Uh, don't see him hit too many above the head winners. He's saying he'll be I'm sure he'll be bring out the kitchen sink if he needs to in yeah. this match. Last time he got to play Timur, last time we'll have this opportunity in this series. So, and that, that is the motivation as well. That you know, this is it. You've done four weeks, and uh, this is it for playing on a glass court. And yeah, you can get it to match for the next little while. Yeah, I think he. I think uh, is a little bit up against it. Um, Physically, we had a pretty good match yesterday. Um, Tim were getting off court under a, under half an hour, I'm pretty sure. So, um, but he'll be looking to leave this series on a high. It's two one, I think, the score. Um, well, in this match, but also um, in matches or head to head with these two in this series. So he'll be hoping to oh, first post, hoping to even that up. Good rallies early on and forcing the error from, yeah. from Timwa. Well, that's a couple of unforced errors in this yeah. uh, game already. already. Yeah. A little bit out of character, that one as well. Just sort of half playing it, not committing. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. If you want to, you've got to play the shot, not be tempted, but then pull out. Yeah, you've got to stay in the shot. Oh, that's just as I say, yeah. That was better. Very nice shot. I guess when the pace is that high as well and you rush your opponent and they can be you know, flustered and a little bit unsure and you can get these kind of errors that uh, seem to come out of nowhere. Well Joe, one thing I'm quite enjoying, I can't see it but I can hear them, and uh, over these last couple of days is a, uh, a couple of families or a group of people out playing on the back courts and enjoying playing squash. It's great. Yeah, it's good to see. Have a bit of people trying to just happy to get out of their out of their house and yeah. back trying a few different sports and supporting local business, which is what we are here at Squash Excel. But that's the thing. It seems to be a, a group of family just going and playing. Yeah, and exactly. That's, that's what we've seen see. quite a bunch, quite, quite a bit of it. And, uh, yeah, that family in particular. I think we've got about seven or eight of them that come down two courts a day. So it's good to see. Just Ooh, staying in. Good lobs. Oh. oh. Again. Oh. Again, that's still that's quite out of character for, for Elijah. He's not someone to hit a lot of winners above his head. And he's done that twice in this game already. So well, he's, one, he didn't do perhaps what Leo Fadi Lofa would have a real go at it. That was more placed. Not as much cut. Yeah, not as much cut. Um, yep. That one's a bit more clinical, a bit more straightforward. Doesn't look as good, but it does, it does the same job. Uh, it was effective. Ooh, he's down. played his way out of that one. Great shot. Great shot. <clears throat> well, he's got himself a couple of points up now. This is where usually when you get to around about 7 6 or 7 5. Yeah. Those are the testing end. points. Yeah. Especially those small buffers, you know. It can be, it can be 8 5 or 6 7. Um, 
mentally it seems which is, a lot. Yeah, which seems, doesn't sound like much, but one or two points is huge at uh, that point in the match. High serve used by Timo Chalisi, get himself back into position. So past the, past, coming up on the 45 minute mark, so relatively physical now. Ooh. Tim has made three years now, so... Almost a grin on the face there of Elijah, thinking, yeah, that's good, I'm happy with that. Very fortunate, yeah. yeah. Whenever you get a free point. Nowhere near it, it was sprinting forward. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just a slot. Ooh, that's out. Again, another error from Timwa. So maybe, maybe Timwa feeling a bit of pressure, maybe not yeah. physical or mental. Um, it is at that, that time of the match, That's as I said. But he's got one back. So, so here's the 5 7 or the 7 5, whichever way you want to look at it. This is the pressure on both to come back up, to get it to equal, or to really yeah. sustain and push a lot of that lead. That three point cushion or the one point cushion is a huge difference. I think it was like this with you and Leo as well. Leo might have had a 7 5 and just yeah. wasn't able to. He picked it up. He did. No, he no, got up. So the pressure's, pressure's mounting on both yeah. the boys. The thing is that most, most we've seen 95% of the time, the players aren't getting at each other. It's no. more about asking the umpire from their side, rather than saying, hey, he just said this, this she said that. So big points now. Six, seven. Oh, great lob. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good assertive score. Flat as a pancake, that one. Yeah. Even if you got so your racket to it, it was... Three, three winners from, from ET in this game. And I think three or four errors from Timo, so... Pretty, pretty interesting set for these two. Great shot. Great play. Very, very balanced on that one. The seven eight now, and uh, Gee. some uh, great tension here between these two players, and we're only in the fourth game. Timo Chalisi, if he took this, well, he's got the match. If Elijah Thomas takes it. Well, we're going to five. Think any sort of day. Any squash fan will want to see this go to five right now. <laughs> it's really good squash between these two boys. Oh, Tim, nice. we're trying to get one back. Oh, a tough rally here. Well, let us know, people, if you're watching this, if you're enjoying it, let us know. If you're not enjoying it, well, perhaps you're watching the wrong sport. Uh, well said. This has got the tension, it's got the shots, and it's got two very capable young players as well. Fortunate with that mm. that side wall. So Tim so was going to try and he's uh, reversed it, come back a bit from two points down to one point ahead. Got to try and close this one out here, Tim. One. Squeeze. Oh, cheekers. Nine all now. Past the 45 minute mark. Your dad's just asked for five. Yeah, I don't blame him. This is very entertaining squash. <laughs> Neither player really seems too dominant at the moment. Well, 
So the call was no let. Elijah Thomas hoping for the let. And uh, the referee saying the ball had gone past. And now it's game and match ball. It's a tough call to make. Oh, he's oh, made the error. He he's made the error. Jeepers. Well, just looking at that uh, no let call, um, the official said the ball had gone past. It had. Oh, gee. Surely. <laughs> Come on, give us a short. It's <laughs> <laughs> gone for short. Okay, going short. This one. Got to watch the neck. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, so, well, we're a little bit speechless there because kind of like an anticlimax. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit speechless, eh? Yeah. Uh, Trying to let that one sink in there. Yeah, so. And okay, well, we are giving that to uh, Tamar Chalisi. He got that in the end on the, on the short. We weren't too sure if we we're actually going to uh, fire there for a second, yeah. uh, John. Um, a little bit strange, but. Yeah, so okay, well, we uh, managed to uh, pinch that one. Officially giving that. <laughs> 11-10 to Timur, so he does take that and uh, so let's just summarise it now um, on the short 11-10 to Timur Chalisi over Elijah Thomas there was a disputed call and uh, I wasn't too sure if it actually hit the 10 that ball for a second I'm not sure what yeah, well, it's, it stayed very low and very yeah. short. Um, and that wasn't what he was appealing for, is that? No, he was appealing for the for the for the let, um, but or the stroke, but it was very very short. Um, so no, Timur managed to managed to clutch it with the the short call at ten all. Okay, well, um, I think that's uh, the end of it for tonight then, yeah. uh, John. <laughs> we were just a little confused there, yeah. I think just a little bit so. Kind of strange finish, but... Particularly when it uh, was on the short one point, next point wins. So it is Tim Wachalisi winning that one in four games over Elijah Thomas. We'll see you all tomorrow from 3pm. It'd be great for uh, you to join us and tell all your mates to come through and enjoy the final day of the Unsquashable Premier League.